Okay, so to get this started, the flow today is definitely going to be a bit more into the upper body and a bit more core intensive as well. We're going to take this toward a lopsided crow. So a lot of bent arm work, good amount of work through the shoulders and the upper back. Just kind of have that in mind as we go through different variations of the poses today. And I'll go through the demonstrations very quickly here before we begin. Now, once we get into the main part of the flow, every sequence will bring you to the front of the mat. I'm going to cue this in just the regular crow shape first, and at least bring yourself into the setup of the pose. Take this as close to balancing as you can go. And then immediately after that, I'll cue this toward that one, that lopsided crow. Work things as best you can. You can separate this out. I'll show you how to put the poses together if you want to do that. I'll just show that once to begin, just something to play around with if your crow is already pretty stable. But coming into this. You're going to be a in a forward fold with the front of that. Hands down, shoulder width, grip the floor with your fingers. Lift your heels and bring your knees to touch your upper arms. Look forward, start to lean, keep that grip. You can always just stay here if this is good enough, but take some weight on your hands, keep your hips up high. Now, if you're going to balance this, keep looking forward and lean forward and lift your feet together. Big toes to touch, heels to your seat, take that to where you can. And just work that as best you can. Immediately after that, I'll keep this toward the lopsided crow. So for that, you'll just come back down, bring this into all fours. And then to set this up, it'll be one forearm on the mat. That'll be my right forearm here. Elbow to the side, bring the hand to the center, keep that forearm diagonal. Slide the other hand back so you can stack the elbow directly over the wrist and pull that elbow into your side. Now to come into the pose, just look down. Tuck the toes of both feet. Lift your hips up high. This is basically a lopsided dolphin right here. Walk your feet further and get your hips as high as you can. And it's easiest to balance this pose the more vertical you are from the shoulders to the hips all through your torso. Now from here, I'm going to keep my left elbow pulled in. The left knee goes to the left arm. I'm going to use my inner thighs to squeeze around right leg toward the left. Don't forget that step. Squeeze your legs toward each other and then see about lifting the second foot up off the floor and just hold from here. Now you can just stay in this pose for a few breaths. We'll take it through the vinyasa and from here coming into the chaturanga or into, and through the transition is a little bit awkward. You can just step it back to plank. You can always fly this back and to see about bring yourself back up and coming into chaturanga, but just work that as best you can. Now, if you want to put the two poses together, you then just take this bit by bit and really try to bear in mind that you definitely want to keep your torso as vertical as you can. So for that, you just come into your crow, and then you decide which arm you're going to take down. So from here, my left arm's coming down, going to come down, which means I bring my both legs over to the right, keep your hips up high, your head low, look down, grip the floor, and take this slow as you pivot, try to set your elbow down as lightly as you can. It's hard to control, Oh, that last couple inches and just work that as best you can and just something extra to play around with here if you've already been been through that po through both poses a few times and just want to figure out how to link things together so just work things as best you can and see how far you want to go with this today and just keep that in mind all right so to get this started let's go ahead and bring this into child's pose so on your shins to begin knees out wide big toes point toward each other and then go ahead sink your seat down toward your heels walk your hands forward as far as you can and let your torso sink down low between your thighs. Bring your forehead down to the mat. Just settle in here. Close your eyes. And then just give yourself a moment to settle in like this. Let your mind quiet down. And when you're ready, start to deepen your breathing. So with the inhales, pulling as much air as you can. Try to fill up your lungs and hold on to all that breath at the top. When you exhale, constrict the back of your throat. So slow your breath down on the way back out. And just work to make your exhales last at least as long as your inhales as you breathe. And just keep breathing like this to begin. Now, when you're ready, you take a deep inhale. And then with your exhale, just keep your eyes closed, but walk your hands over to the right side. So extend your torso long over your right thigh. Stretch both arms long. Let your head just hang and try to keep your hips down low. Take an inhale. And then with the exhale, bring the hands back through center. Come over your left side. Torso long over your left thigh. Stretch your arms out long. Try to keep your seat low to your heels and let your head just hang. Deep inhale. And then with the exhale, bring it back through center over to the right. And we'll take this a little bit further. Torso along over your left thigh, right thigh rather. Stretch your left arm as far right as you can and then bend the right elbow. Set your right hand down outside your right leg. Press down, sink that left shoulder toward the floor and just come into a little bit of a twist here. 
With your next inhale, reach that right arm in line with the left. And then with the exhale, bring your hands back through center over to your left side again. Torso along over your left thigh. Bring that right hand as far left as you can. And then bend your left elbow. Pull the left hand back outside your left leg. Press down. Sink your right shoulder toward the floor and just breathe here. With your next inhale, reach the arms in line. And then with the exhale, bring the hands back into center. Go ahead, open your eyes. And then walk the hands in toward your knees. Bring yourself toward an upright seat. And just keep yourself on your shins. So you can always take a cross-legged seat if that suits you better. But we'll take the slow to start. So with your next inhale, reach your arms up high. Exhale, hands down through heart center. Inhale, reach us up high again. Exhale, hands through center. Inhale, arms up high. Exhale, through center again. Inhale, reach up high. And then with the exhale, this time lean to the right, right hand to the floor, left arm reaching right, stretch this out long, bring your gaze up high, just breathe here. With your next inhale, bring it back to center, reach up through both arms. And then with the exhale, lean left, left hand down, right arm reaching left, stretch out long, gaze up high, and just hold that stretch here. With your next inhale, back to center, arms up high. And then with the exhale, this time twist to the right. Right hand to the floor behind. Left arm outside your right thigh. Now sit this up tall. Reach the crown of the head toward the ceiling. Bring your gaze back over the right shoulder and use your left arm. Press it into the right leg. With your next inhale, time to center. Arms up high. And then with the exhale, twist left. Bring the left hand down behind. Right hand, arm outside your left thigh. And again, extend straight up to the top of your head. Look back over your left shoulder and use your right arm. Press it into the left leg here. With your next inhale, come to center. Reach up high. And then with the exhale, bring the hands down through center. Down to the floor. Come into all fours for a moment. And once you're in all fours, let's take a moment here and move around. Stretch your hands, stretch your fingers, let your shoulders and hips move side to side and just feel things out. Loosen up your spine. Feel out where you're loose and where you're tight. And then go ahead, bring this back into center. Now, walk your hands back in toward your knees. And we'll take the, and take the legs into the shape that we started with. So bring the knees out wider than your hips, big toes pointing toward each other. Maybe they touch. Come down to sitting on your heels. And then from here, we'll engage through the front line of the body here before we take things too far. So bring your hands up behind your head. Interlace your fingers. Palms open, elbows wide. Draw the shoulders back. Open up your chest. Stay tall through your spine. Keep your gaze forward. And then kick down. Now, as you kick into the floor, lift your seat just above your heels and then keep your spine vertical. Bring this all the way up. Come up to kneeling. Engage your glutes at the top. Press your hips forward and then keep your shoulders pulled back like this. Let's bring it back down, but take it slow. Lightly touch your seat to your heels. And then again, kick into the floor and bring yourself all the way up. Keep your torso upright. Squeeze your glutes once you're all the way forward. And then again, pull back in. Keep your torso upright. Keep your gaze forward. Lightly touch your seat to your heels. Two more times. Kick into the floor. Bring this back up. Take it slow. Squeeze your glutes once you're all the way up. And then slow on the way back down. Sink down toward your heels. Just lightly touch down. Keep your torso upright. Bring it up one more time. And then once you're all the way up, squeeze your glutes. Hold here and stay lifted. And then keep the right hand where it is. Release the left. And then look down your left arm, twist to your left side, reach toward your left heel, lean back to bring your fingertips down to the floor. Now keep the right elbow high, keep your right shoulder high, keep the twist. And then just back and forth from here, so sink your seat down toward your heels. With an inhale, press up and open your chest to the left side, keep your left hand down. Sink your seat back toward your heels. And then kick into the floor, press your hips forward and twist. And then one more time, sink down. And then kick into the floor. Squeeze your glutes. Press forward. Keep the right shoulder, right elbow high. Hold on to this here. Now keep squeezing your glutes. Keep the front of the body long. And then as you kick into your feet, slowly bring your left hand off the floor. Left hand behind your head. Switch this out. Reach the right arm at your side and down. And then look down the length of your right arm. Lean back and bring the fingertips down to the floor. Glutes are still squeezing. Hips still press forward. Now from here, sink your seat back toward your heels. 
And then kick into the floor, press the hips forward, open to the right side this time. And then slowly sink this back down. Kick into the floor, squeeze your glutes, open to the right, left elbow, left shoulder high. One more time, sink your seat back toward your heels. And then kick down, squeeze your glutes, hold here, let your head fall back. And then bring yourself upright again. Kick into the floor, bring the right hand up to meet the left. And then bring both hands down. Come back into all fours and move around. So I'd walk your knees back, move around a little bit side to side, maybe twist a little bit. Maybe shake your legs out a little bit as well. And then we'll take this into the rest right away. So from all fours, I want you to walk your hands back. I'm going to keep most of the weight on the legs here to start. But bring your legs together. So let the knees touch, let the feet touch underneath. And then bring the hands outside your knees and flip them over. Backs of the hands down, palms facing up, fingertips pointing in the direction of your toes. Now flatten the backs of your hands, spread your fingers out wide, press your fingertips down. Try to work with straight arms here first. And as your fingertips press down, lean your shoulders forward a little bit past your wrists. Now most of the weight should be centered on your legs. Take it back and forth from here. We're going to work this with bent arms. Now look forward, pull your chest forward, and then bend the elbows straight back. Just sink down as low as you want to take this. You don't have to go too far. Press into the fingertips, come back up towards straight arms. Again, shoulders forward, elbows back, squeeze the elbows into your sides as they bend. And then again, press this back up. Couple more times, shoulders forward, bend the elbows into your sides as you come down. Press back up the straight. And then one more time, bring your shoulders forward, bend the elbows, squeeze the elbows into your sides, look forward, hold on to this here. Keep your fingertips pressing down, keep breathing here. Just feel that stretch. Let it move through the backs of the hands up into the forearms. And then slowly come back up the straight arms and then up onto your fingertips. Now go ahead and separate your legs from here. So knees about hips with distance apart and feet about hips with distance apart as well. But still keep your hands close. So bring your hands right in front of your knees. Now this time, palms down, fingertips rotated to the side and then in toward your knees as far as you can go. Set both hands down flat. Now spread your fingers out wide, dig the fingertips down, grip the floor. And as you hold on to that grip, lean your shoulders forward. Still working with bent arms here. Now look forward, try to hold an arch to the length of your spine. Keep your chest pointing forward. And then bend the elbows in toward you, squeeze them underneath, just come down as low as you're comfortable. And then press back up towards straight arms, keep your shoulders forward. Again, shoulders forward as the elbows bend, keep looking forward, pull your chest forward, keep gripping with your fingers. And then press back up. One more time, shoulders forward as the elbows bend, now stay low here. Squeeze the elbows in underneath, keep gripping the floor with your fingers, it might be good enough just to stay like this, but if you can go further, go ahead, step your right foot all the way back, touch your toe down. And then bring the right knee forward. Left foot back, big toe touches the floor. And then bring the left knee forward. Right foot back again, keep looking forward. And then bring the right knee back where it was. Step your left foot back again. And then bring your left knee forward. One more round, step your right foot straight back, touch down. Bring the right knee forward. Step your left foot straight back, touch that toe down. And bring the left knee forward. And then go ahead, straighten your arms. Come up onto the fingertips, down to sitting on your heels, and take a moment here. Shake your hands out. Loosen up your fingers and loosen up your wrists. And then when you're ready, bring your legs out from underneath you and come down to a seat. Now, once you're seated, feet in front of you about hips width distance apart, hands behind the shoulders about shoulder width. And we're going to walk this. So I want you to keep your palms down, fingertips rotated out to either side, right, and left. Lift your seat up off the floor. And then stay lifted from the shoulders. Keep your arms basically straight. Go ahead and walk this to the back of the mat. And just let your weight shift side to side. Opposite hand and opposite foot. Once you make it to the back, go ahead and walk this forward. Now press from the shoulder into the palm. Once you make it to the front of the mat, walk it back again, but exaggerate this. And let your chest open to one side and then the other. And just feel this out. And once you take that to the back of the mat, take it forward. And just feel it out. Let your weight shift side to side. Your body's going to twist a little bit as you move. And then once you make it to the front of the mat, walk back again. But this time, just take it back to center. Go ahead, set yourself down. Shake your hands out for a moment. And we'll take this to reverse tabletop. So feet in front of your hips with distance apart still. Hands behind the shoulders about shoulder width. Now you can point your fingertips forward if you like, or just keep your fingers pointed to the sides, and that'll be easier on the wrists. But pressing your hands and feet, lift your seat up off the floor. And let's take it up and down. Inhale, press your hips high. Exhale, sink this down. Inhale, lift up again. And then with the exhale, lower. Inhale, lift your hips. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, press this up. 
and then with the exhale, lower. Now with your next inhale, lift your hips high and hold here. Now you can look forward, look up, or hang your head back, but keep your glutes squeezing, keep your hips lifting, keep gripping the floor with your fingers. And just keep breathing with this. Take a deep inhale. And then with the exhale, bring it all back down. Now once you come down, go ahead and take a moment to take your hands out just a little bit. And then when you're ready, cross at the ankles. Roll forward your hands, find all fours. And then from all fours, let's take a moment here and move around. Stretch your hands, stretch your fingers again, and stay loose. And then from all fours, let's take this down onto the forearms. So go ahead and bring your forearms down to the floor. We're going to take this into dolphins. So you've got two choices. You can have the forearms parallel with the palms down, or maybe press the palms together. You can interlace your fingers if you like. But either way, to see you stay in control of your elbows, keep them at shoulder width. Now, wherever you set this up, go ahead and tuck the toes of both feet. Lift your knees up off the floor. Bring your hips up high. And you can always just stay loose with this, but keep your hips lifted. Now, press into your hands, distribute the weight through the forearms rather than just the elbows. And you can always bend your knees and take a break at any time. If you can take it further, walk your feet forward and get your hips as high as you can. Now, if you wanted to stay here, that's fine. But if you can take this further, I'm going to cue this into dolphin push-ups. So for that, with an inhale, bring your chin as far forward as you can toward your hands. And then exhale, press back up. And then forward for two. Exhale back. Forward for three. Exhale back. Forward for four. Exhale back again. Forward for five. Exhale back. Forward for six. Exhale back. Forward for seven. Exhale back. Forward for eight. Exhale back. Forward for nine. Exhale back. And then forward for ten. Exhale back one more time. Bring your knees down. Come back up onto your hands. Take a couple breaths. And then from here, we're going to take this into a modified version of a Russian push up. So we're going to start this from all fours. Now we're just going to do three rounds of this. It's a few movements back and forth. And keep in mind, you're moving with bent elbows. Work to keep your arms parallel and keep them in line. So when you bend your elbows, be sure you're pulling in towards center. Now walk your hands a little bit closer to your knees, a little closer than the usual all fours, maybe about half a hand's length. Now grip the floor with your fingers, press down, start with your spine lifted, and then look forward. Now take it slow. Bring your shoulders forward as your elbows bend, come halfway down. This is chaturanga arms here, pull in, and then shift your weight back. Elbows are bent, bring them down to touch the floor. Elbows stay bent, bring your weight forward, back to chaturanga with the elbows pulled in, and then press this up to straight. Again like that. Shoulders forward as the elbows bend, now hold here halfway down, and then bring your weight back. Elbows come down to the floor. Shift your weight forward. Elbows still pulled into your sides. And then press this up to straight. Again, one more time. Shoulders forward as the elbows bend. Hold here. Now bring your weight back. Elbows down to the floor. Shift your weight forward. Arms are still bent. Elbows pulled into your sides. And then press this up to straight. And take a moment here to breathe. Move around. Now I'm going to do one more set like that, so three more rounds. And you can do this with your knees where they are, and this may be the easiest way to do this. Just work the engagement of the arms. If you can take this further, go ahead and step your feet back, and you do this with straight legs. And that's going to bring you through plank and dolphin as well. Same movement of the arms out of the way. Now when you're ready, just bring your gaze forward. And then from here, shoulders forward as the elbows bend. Now hold here halfway down. Now bring your weight back. Elbows come down to the floor. Now keep gripping. Bring your weight forward. Elbows are bent, back to chaturanga arms. Press this up the straight. Two more rounds. Shoulders forward as the elbows bend, now hold here, halfway down. Shift your weight back, elbows come down to the floor. Now bring your weight forward, arms are bent, elbows still pulled in. And then press back up the straight. One more round. Shoulders forward as the elbows bend, now hold here, halfway. Bring your weight back, elbows come down to the floor. Now shift your weight forward, arms are bent, elbows still pulled in. Press back up the straight, and set your knees down. Take a moment here to move and breathe. And then one more thing before we move on from this portion here. We're going to take it toward a lopsided shape, toward that lopsided dolphin. So bring the right forearm down to the mat, but stay in your left hand. Now the right elbow stays to the side. Bring that hand to center, that forearm's diagonal. Slide your left hand back so you can stack the elbow directly over the wrist and keep that elbow pulled into your side. Now just look straight down. Tuck the toes of both feet. 
And then lift your knees up off the floor and bring your hips up high. Now you can just stay here, keep that left elbow pulled in. You can bend your knees, you can take a break anytime and come back up. If you can take it further, walk your feet as far forward as you can to get your hips as high as possible. Now this is good enough to stay here, distribute the weight through both hands. And then if you wanna move, take an inhale with your left leg high, and then scorpion the pose, bend the left knee, hang the left foot right, but keep the left elbow pulled into your side. With an inhale, straighten your left leg. Exhale, bring it forward, knee to left arm. Inhale, the left leg high. Exhale, knee to left arm. Inhale, the left leg high. Exhale, knee to left arm one more time. Now set that knee on your arm. Keep the elbow pulled in. And then take it further. Use your inner thigh. Squeeze the right leg into the left. And then go ahead and release this. Bring both knees down. Come back to all fours. And keep in mind, that's the direction we're taking it to with that lopsided crow setup. Now we'll take this on the other side because, of course, you've got to do both sides here. So go ahead and bring your left arm down to the mat when you're ready. Left elbow to the side, left hand comes to the center, that forms diagonal. Slide your right hand back so you can stack that elbow directly over the wrist and keep the elbow pulled into your side. Now look down, tuck the toes of both feet, lift your knees up off the floor, bring your hips up high. And again, just being the shape could be enough. You can bring the knees down anytime. But if you can take it further, walk the feet forward, get your hips as high as you can. Right elbow stays pulled in. Now if you want to move with this, inhale the right leg up high behind you. Bend the right knee, scorp in the pose, let the right hip stack above the left. And then inhale, straighten the right leg. Exhale, bring it forward, knee to right arm. Inhale, the right leg high. Exhale, knee to right arm. Inhale, the right leg high. Exhale, knee to right arm one more time. Now keep it here, set that knee on your arm. And then see about using your thigh. Squeeze the left leg into the right. And then bring this all the way down. Back to your knees, up onto your hands. Back to all fours. Take a moment here, move around. And just let yourself breathe. Now, if you like, you can just take a little break here. If you need to stretch, now is a good time. But whenever you're ready, go ahead, tuck your toes, straighten your legs, lift your hips, and find it down with facing dog. Now, once you move into position, take a look at how you set this up. Hands about shoulder width distance apart. Now, flatten your hands, press your palms down. So you want to feel some weight toward the base of the thumb as well as the outside edge. Sink your chest low to the floor. Now, as your chest sinks down, press your hips up as high as you can. And keep reaching up through the hips to bring the upper body into one long line from the wrist creases through to the hips. Hold some tension through the belly around the little ribs. And if you're tight through the legs and the hamstrings, go ahead, bend your knees and let that go. You can always just pedal this out and let your hips move side to side. When you're ready here, take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just bend the knees, look forward, and step this to the front of the mat. It's like a ragdoll fold. So feet about hips with distance apart, deep bend in the knees. Let your belly touch your thighs, let your head hang, let your spine round. Let everything go long and loose here, let the muscles in your neck relax. Now you can hang your hands to the floor, you can reach to opposite elbows, maybe shake this side to side to loosen further. And then when you're ready here, just release any grip that you have. Keep the bend in the knees to begin, but then restack your spine, so slowly round this up to standing. Bring your head up last, and then just open up your palms at your sides. Now when you're ready with an inhale, reach your arms up high. And then with the exhale, just bring your hands down to heart center. Now take a moment here to breathe, set an intention. Let your mind clear, find your focus. Take a deep inhale. And then with the exhale, just release your hands. Now with your next inhale, reach your arms up high. And then with the exhale, slowly fold this forward. So hinge at the hips, start with a straight spine, put a little bend in the knees. Keep your core engaged, move smoothly, and then just release at the bottom. With an inhale, lift up halfway, fingertips to the floor till your shins lengthen forward through the crown of your head. And then with the exhale, bring your hands to the mat and just step it back to high plank. Now find your shape here. Resync the shoulders, palms pressed down, press the floor away from you. And press your spine up toward the ceiling. Try to keep your spine lifted as the highest point from the shoulder blades. Bring your body into line, shoulders through hips through heels. Keep that engagement in your core. When you're ready here, take an inhale. And with the exhale, slowly bring your shoulders forward as the elbows bend. Keep your body in line, elbows pulled into your sides, and lower with control all the way down into your belly. Once you're down, flatten the feet out behind you, hands under the shoulders, elbows into your sides. And we'll take this up and down through low cobra. So with an inhale, just peel up your head, neck, and chest. Exhale, roll back down. Inhale, peel this up again. Exhale, roll back down. Inhale, peel up one more time. Now just stay lifted here. 
Keep the lift in the upper body, press into your feet, take some or all the weight out of your hands. Elbows at your sides, pull the shoulders back, keep your gaze forward. And work to lift this up a little bit higher. Take an inhale. Exhale, roll back down. Hands under the shoulders, elbows in at your sides, press the palms to the floor. I'm going to take this to upward facing dogs. So with an inhale, straighten your arms. Now pull your chest forward, let your hips hang, stay on the tops of your feet. Keep your legs active, work to lift the knees up from the mat. To take it further, kick your feet down, squeeze your glutes, try to pull the hips forward to help deepen and lengthen the arc through the front. Lift up with the arms, lift your shoulders as well, keep your neck long, keep your chest pulling forward. And then take a deep inhale. And with the exhale, pull your belly in. Hips up high, back to down dog. Paddle out for a moment, let your hips move side to side. Now from your downward facing dog, take a deep inhale. And then with the exhale, bend your knees, look forward, step or float. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, forward, fold. Inhale, a standing arms reach up high. And with the exhale, sink in a chair this time. Put the weight to heels, bend your knees, and bring your hips down low. Now as you settle in, pay attention to your stance. Feet within hips with distance, big toes and knees towards center, belly pulled in. And as you sink down, bring that left hand behind your head. Make that hand to a fist. With your right hand, take hold of the left wrist. Now draw the left arm across from behind your head. Press your head back into your left arm. Keep your shoulders back. Keep your chest open. Keep looking forward. Maybe bring your hips down lower. And then when you're ready for me, focus weight on the left foot and lift your right heel. Come to the very tip of the right big toe. Now keep your balance here as best you can. So right heel comes up. Just touch your left knee. And then sink down right knee to left calf. Bring it back up, heel to knee. Keep looking forward, sink down, knee to calf. And then again, bring it up, heel to knee. Bring it down one more time, knee to calf. And then come back up into a figure four, right ankle over your left thigh. Now curl the toes with the right foot, keep the knee to the side, maybe come to a straighter left leg. If you can, try to sink this down further and bend to that left knee. Keep your gaze forward, keep breathing. Now take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just slowly set the right foot down next to the left. Put the weight to the right foot, lift your left heel. And then hands to your hips. Bring yourself all the way up to standing with your left knee high. Take a moment to find your balance here. Now dig into the right big toe. Slow your breathing down when you're ready. Go ahead, line the left knee up with the right and reach back with your left hand. We're going to take this to dancer. So find the inside edge of the left foot. And then once you have that grip, kick into your left hand. Maybe just stay right here. Good enough if you're just working on the balance. Now, if you're going to go further, right arm high, palm forward. And then to take it further, kick into your left hand and lean against the tension of the kick. Now, let your shoulders come forward as that left knee lifts behind you. Just take this as deep as you're able. Keep your gaze forward. Keep the right leg strong. And just breathe here. Now slowly, with an inhale, bring yourself upright, hands to your hips, left knee lifted, you're still balancing. And then reach your arms straight down at your sides, make your hands into fists. Keep the arms straight, keep your fists clenched, bring the arms behind you, maybe to about 45 degrees or so, open up your chest. And we're going to take this to warrior three like this, so bend the right knee, hinge from the right hip, extend your left leg straight. Now keep your hips in line, keep your gaze forward, maybe stay more upright. And if you can take it further, keep hinging from the right hip and maybe come down toward parallel to the floor. Keep your shoulders pulled back, keep your gaze forward, keep breathing here. And then take this a little bit deeper if you're ready to move. Bend into the right knee, sink down belly toward your right thigh. Press into your right foot, come back up toward a straight right leg. Again, bend the right knee, sink this down as best you're able. And again, press back up toward straight. One more time, bend the right knee, sink down low, try to bring your belly to touch your thigh for a moment. And then release both hands down, left foot down behind you, low lunge. Now from your low lunge, we're going to take this to a dancer's bridge. So the left hand's your base. Roll to the outside edge of the left foot. Step the right foot behind your left leg. Sink your hips down. Now with an inhale, press your hips up high and reach the right arm. Keep your glutes squeezing. Keep your hips lifting. Let your head fall back. You can stack the shoulders or open your chest toward the ceiling. Make it more of a back bend. But keep breathing and keep that lift. Take an inhale. Now with the exhale, sink back down. Right hand forward, right foot forward, back to low lunge. Now I want to take this to a grounded twist. So see if you don't two separate tracks, hips with distance side to side. Make your left hand to a fist, and then press it down into the floor. Take a half bind, right on behind your back, palm face. Now use that to keep your right shoulder pulled back. Now keep your gaze down the length of the left arm. Keep your torso twisted and open to the right side. Now ground down into the right foot, and then hover your left hand. 
take it slow, hinge from the hips, right shoulder back, left arm forward, come all the way up, and then go slow, hinge forward, and just barely touch that left hand down to the floor. Again, press into the right foot. Bring yourself up right, right shoulder back, left arm forward, and then hinge forward, and just touch that left hand down one more time. And then press into the right foot, bring this all the way up. Right shoulder back, left arm forward, hold here. Open up your left hand. Look to the right, reach your right arm back and release the bind. Find your full twist. Now as you twist it here, try to hold on to as much of this twist as you can. And then very slowly bring the left knee down to the floor and flatten that left foot behind you. Now when you're ready, with an inhale, turn to center, arms up high. Exhale, hands behind your head, fingers interlace. Palms open behind, draw the shoulders back. And then bend deeper into the right knee, sink low toward Anjaneyasana here. Now keep your gaze up high, pull the shoulders back, keep your chest open, keep breathing. And then when you're ready, go ahead, press into that right foot. Lean this further back, stack your hips over your left knee, and keep your gaze high. Now I'm going to take this back toward a twist, so when you're ready from here, go ahead, release the left hand, or right hand rather, and then reach down toward your left heel. Now look down the length of the left arm. Maybe you touch the heel, maybe you don't, but left elbow high. And just breathe into this here as you twist open to the right one more time. With your next inhale, turn to center, reach straight up. And then with the exhale, bring both hands down around the right foot. Now tuck the toes of the left foot, lift your left knee, come into low lunge. And then step the left foot forward next to the right. Now I want to take this into crow from here, so palms down. Grip the floor with your fingers, lift your heels, bring the knees to touch your arms. And then look forward, lean forward, take things slow. And move into balancing when you're ready. So tip forward, lift your feet together, big toes to touch, heels to your seat. And just take this to where you like, a higher version or a lower version. Now if you want to move into that lopsided curl, bring your feet back down, knees come down to the floor. And then to set this up, bring the right forearm down to the mat, but stay in your left hand. Right elbow stays aside, bring the right hand to center. Slide your left hand back, elbow directly over the wrist, and keep that elbow pulled into your side. Now just keep looking down, tuck the toes of both feet. Lift your knees, bring your hips up high. Walk the feet further and get your hips higher still. Now to move into this balance here, bring the left knee to the left arm. Squeeze the right leg toward the left, use your inner thighs. Maybe lift the right foot as well. And just take things to where you can. When you're ready, go ahead and move through your vinyasa. Once you find your down dog, give yourself a moment, paddle things out. And then we'll take all that to the other side. So from downward facing dog, take an inhale. With the exhale, bend your knees, look forward, step or float to the front. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale to standing, reach your arms high. And with the exhale, sink into chair, put the weight to your heels, bend your knees and bring your hips down low. Now as you settle in again, pay attention to your stance, feet within hips with distance, big toes and knees towards center, belly pulled in, and we'll bind this from above. So make the right hand to a fist, with your left hand take hold of the right wrist, and then draw that right arm behind your head, press your head back into that arm, shoulders pulled back, chest open, keep looking forward, maybe sink this lower. And then when you're ready, just focus the weight on the right foot, and lift your left heel. Now take it back and forth, bring the left heel up to touch the right knee, left knee down toward the right calf. Bring it back up, heel to knee, and then come back down, knee to calf. Bring it up again, heel to knee, and then down, knee to calf one more time. Now bring that left leg up into a figure four, so left ankle crosses the right thigh. Curl the toes, the left foot, left knee to the side, keep looking forward, maybe sink your hips lower, you can always come up more toward vertical. And then take an inhale, and with the exhale, just release it, step the left foot down next to the right. Now shift the weight to the left foot, lift your right heel. And then when you're ready, hands to your hips, bring this all the way up with your right knee high. Give yourself a moment to find your balance here. So dig into the left big toe, slow your breathing down. When you're ready, line the right knee up with the left and reach back with your right hand. Find the inside edge of your right foot. Now once you've got that grip, kick in your hand, line up your knees. And then to take it further, left arm high, palm forward. Kick into the right hand. And then lean forward against the tension of the kick. You don't have to take it too far. Take it to the depth you can control here. But keep your gaze forward. Keep drawing that right shoulder forward to lift the right knee. And just keep breathing. Keep your left leg strong. And 
Now slowly, let's bring this all the way up, right? Right knee, lifted hands, your hips for just a moment. Now once you got your balance, reach your arms straight down, make your hands into fists. Arms stay straight, lift the fists up behind you, open up your chest. And then bend into your left knee, hinge from the left hip, extend your right leg straight and bring your lifted body into one long line. Maybe stay more upright like this. Now you can take it further, hinge from that left hip, come down toward parallel, toward that full warrior three. But keep your gaze forward, keep your shoulders pulled back, keep everything in line that's lifted. If you can take it further, bend into your left knee, bring your belly down toward touching your thigh. And then pressing your left foot, come back toward a straight leg. Again, bend your left knee, sink this down, still balancing. And then press back up. And then one more time, bend your left knee, come as low as you can. Try to touch your belly, your thigh, keep balancing. And then release, both hands down. Right foot down behind your low lunge. Now from here to that dancer's bridge, right hand's your base. Roll to the outside edge of the right foot, left foot steps behind your right leg, sink your hips down. With an inhale, press up high, stretch long through that left arm. Now stay lifted here, stay breathing. Maybe stack the shoulders, maybe open your chest toward the ceiling, but stay lifted. Take an inhale. With the exhale, sink back down. Left hand forward, left foot forward, back to low lunge. Now from low lunge, we'll take this into that grounded twist. So see if you're on two separate tracks, hips with distance. And then make your right hand to a fist. Now press that fist down into the floor. Half bind, left arm behind your back, palm face away, pull that shoulder back. And then take things slow. Ground down into your left foot, hover the right hand. Stay twisted. Slowly bring your torso upright. Left shoulder back, right arm forward, keep looking down your right arm. And then hinge forward and just lightly touch that right hand to the floor. Again, press into your left foot. Bring your torso upright, left shoulder back, right arm forward again. Hinge forward and lightly touch that right hand down to the floor. One more time, press in left foot. Bring this all the way to vertical, left shoulder back, right arm forward, hold here. Open up the right hand, bring your gaze left. And then reach your left arm back, come to that full vertical twist, stay tall. And slowly bring the right knee all the way down to the floor. And go ahead, flatten that right foot behind you. Now with an inhale, go ahead, reach up high, turn forward. Exhale, hands behind your head, fingers interlaced, palms open, elbows wide. Bring your gaze up high and sink your hips low and toward the front of the mat. Come into Anjane Asana here, just breathe. Now, when you're ready, press in the left foot. Keep your gaze up high. Lean this further back. Stack your hips over the right knee this time. And then as you hold this, just release the left hand. Keep the right hand behind your head. Look down the length of your left arm as you reach back toward that right heel. Right shoulder high, right elbow high. Keep your hips pressed forward. Keep breathing. And then with an inhale, turn to center. Reach up high. With the exhale, hands down around that left foot. Tuck the toes of the right foot. Lift your right knee. And then step the right foot forward next to the left forward fold. When you're ready from here, take an inhale, lift up halfway. And then with the exhale, set your hands down. We're going to take it back to crow. So the hands are shoulder width, grip your mat, lift your heels, and touch the knees to your arms. Now look forward, start to lean. Shoulders forward as the elbows bend, keep your gaze forward. If you're going to balance it, lift your feet together. Big toes to touch, heels to your seat, take that to where you can. Now if you want that lopsided crow, bring your feet back down, bring your knees to the floor. And then from all fours, left forearm to the mat, elbow to the side, bring the left hand to center. Slide your right hand back, stack the elbow directly over the wrist and keep that elbow pulled in. Now tuck the toes of both feet, lift your knees, get your hips up high. Walk the feet further in, hips higher still. And then as right knee to the right arm, left leg squeezes to the right, use your inner thighs. Maybe lift your left foot as well. And then when you're ready, take it through another vinyasa. Now from your down dog, when you're ready, inhale the right leg high behind you. And with the exhale, bring that right leg forward for half pigeon. Right knee behind the right wrist, right ankle somewhere behind the left. Go ahead, flatten your left foot, straighten your left leg, pull the left hip forward, keep it in line with the right. Sink your weight straight down. And keep your hips squared. Look for at least some of that stretch on the right side, outer right hip or toward the glutes. Now, you can stay upright with it like this. You can go toward a back bend. You can melt this down and relax if you like. I'm going to keep this toward a more active variation of this with a twist. So if you're interested, just keep your torso upright. And then bring the left hand inside the right hand. And then pull your right hand back. So right hand to the right knee, maybe to the right hip. Look back over your right shoulder. Keep the left hip pulling forward. Keep both hips sinking down. And kick that right foot into the floor. 
Now this could be enough right here, but if you want to take it even further, go ahead, bend your left knee, lift the left foot. Maybe reach back with the right hand, and if you find that grip, pull the heel toward your seat and use this to deepen your twist. Keep your hips sinking down and keep breathing with this. Just take things to where you can right now. Now from wherever you are, take an inhale. Now with the exhale, if you twist it, turn everything back to center. If your hands are forward, walk them in close. When you're ready, tuck the toes of your left foot. Release your right leg, shake it out for just a moment. And we'll take that to the other side. So once the right foot's down, inhale your left leg up high. With the exhale, bring it forward, left knee behind your left wrist up to ankle, somewhere behind the right. Bring the right knee down, flatten the right foot behind you, pull the right hip forward, keep it in line with the left, and sink straight down. Keep your chest pulling forward. Look for some of that stretch on the left side. Now you can always stay upright again. You can move toward the back bend. You can melt down, but if you want the twist, keep yourself upright. Right hand inside the left. Pull the left hand back to the left knee. Maybe the left hip, draw that shoulder back, look back over your left shoulder. Keep both hips sinking down. Now if you want to take it even further, maybe lift your right foot, bend the right knee. Reach back with your left hand. If you find that grip, pull the heel toward your seat and use this to deepen your twist. And again, just take things to where you can here. Take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just release this. Bring both hands forward if you're twisted. Walk them back in if they're, if they're further forward. And once your hands are close enough, tuck the toes of the right foot. Release your left leg. Shake it out. And then once you're ready, once that left foot's down, bring your knees to the mat. Legs out from underneath you. Come all the way down onto your back. Now when you're down, draw your knees into your chest. Squeeze everything in for a moment. And press your spine down flat. And then when you're ready, just release your left leg and bring your left arm down to your side. Now right arm inside the right leg, take hold of the big toe. Once you got that grip, pull down. Now as you're pulling down, extend that right leg up toward the ceiling. So keep the tension working both directions. Look for that stretch in the back of the right thigh. If your hamstrings are tight, your knees can be bent. That's fine. Just hold the tension, breathe into it. Now if you want to take it further or if you want to change your grip, you can use one or both hands. You can hold the foot, the ankle, the shin, the thigh, whatever works best. If your right leg is straight, pull the big toe directly over your shoulder and just breathe with this here. Now take a deep inhale. And with the exhale, slowly bend the right knee lower toward the side of your ribs. Now as you come down, keep pulling with that right hand, and then when the foot's low enough, right hand comes to the outside edge of the foot, left hand to the other side. We're taking this to half happy baby. Now stack the ankle above the knee best you can, pull down. Press the foot back up at the same time, and just keep the tension working both directions here. Take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just release your grip. Draw both knees into your chest. Squeeze down for a moment. When you're ready, extend that right leg out fully. Right arm down at your side. Left arm inside the left leg, take hold of the big toe. Now once you got that grip, pull down, keep the left hip on the floor. And then start to press your left foot to up toward the ceiling as you're pulling down. Now look for the stretch on the back of the left thigh this time. Just take it the way you need to. Breathe into the stretch when you feel it. And if you need to change the grip, again, one of both hands. You can hold the foot, the ankle, the shin, the thigh, whatever works best. Now, if that leg is straight, draw the big toe directly over your shoulder and just keep breathing into this here. Now take an inhale. And with the exhale, slowly bend into the left knee, lower toward the side of your ribs. When the foot's low enough, left hand to the outside edge, right hand to the other side. Now stack that ankle above your knee, pull down with both hands, and press the foot back up at the same time. Now just keep the tension working up and down here, breathe into the stretch on this side. Now 
and then take an inhale. With the exhale, just release the right hand. Let's take the full pose. Draw your right knee in. And so it's hands to the outside edges of the feet, ankles above your knees. Pull down on both sides. Now try to press the knees to the floor outside your ribs. Press your feet back up at the same time. So keep the tension working up and down. Flatten your spine best you can. And if you want to take it further, you can rock a little bit side to side. And if you want to take it further still, you can extend your legs out against your grip. And then finally, when you're ready, hit take a deep inhale, draw it down as much as you can. And then with the exhale, just release, extend your legs out fully. Lay your arms at your sides. Open up your palms toward the ceiling. And just let your eyes close here and let your body settle down into the mat for a moment. And then when you're ready, you start to move again, bit by bit, fingers and toes, arms and legs. And stretch this out long. Take a deep inhale, reach your arms out past your head. And then pull things back in. Bring your elbows toward your chest. Draw your knees up as well. And just take your time. Find your way up to a comfortable seat. And then ground yourself into the mat, stack your spine. Bring your hands up to heart center. Now take a deep inhale here, hold on to the top. And just let everything go. I think you've been doing class, namaste.